Good morning again. Let's talk about an interesting topic here. I'm thinking about resetting this whole thing and let's start fresh because we're going to talk about the super interesting topic, lag compensation. So I'll set up my, my, my data here just like we had before. So we're going to have our server here. We're going to have um, one client here and another client here. And we're going to use the same setup in that the server is simulating forward um, 101, 100, and it will so forth. Simulate those. Client B already, let's say it already received data from 100, but it is predicting 101, 102, perhaps. Let's, let's do all the way to 103. Let's, let's add our stuff here. So this guy is predicting the data here. I'm not going to talk about the interpolation on, on the guy that's predicting because we talked about that already. Just matters to me that on his machine, he's predicting all the way to 103. The server already sent him 100, so he has confirmed data for 100, and he simulated forward with prediction here. The server actually already has data about 101 as well for all characters, but that did not reach any of the clients yet. So client 1, the second client, which is the one that I'm interested in, has confirmed data from the server also for tick 100. But the snapshot interpolation that I'm seeing, I'm on this client, is somewhere between 98 and 99, as we previously said. And I didn't fix this to move a bit right, but it's OK. So I'm still seeing like this. So, so that means that I'm seeing this guy that on his own screen, he's simulating, he's already here. So assuming this is not only time, but also the x-axis. So this is aligned in space. So this is the interesting thing. So I'm seeing him around here. Around, let's, let's use this middle thing here. So I'm seeing here, here, because that's what I see as interpolated version of him. And he sees himself somewhere here. He's technically on simulation side like here, but maybe he's extrapolating, so he's seeing himself here. And whoever is playing on the server is seeing this guy uh, somewhere here, which will be, let's see, let's, let's use this, this, let's use this line here to, as a, as a timeline for how people see each other. So I'll be seeing this guy here, that's my proxy. The server is going to be seeing this guy around here, which is the truth, the actual server authoritative simulation. And the guy sees himself here. He's far ahead because he's simulating the prediction. The point is my character, my, 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 my character, is also doing prediction here. So I'm also running this tick here. So my character is on a time that's similar to that. But I don't. it doesn't matter because the point is I'm trying to shoot the guy that's controlled by this client. And what I see is not what's on the server. What's on the server is this. What the player on the server sees is this, but the, the final data on the server is this here. And, and the point is, I'm simulating here 101, 102. On 103, let's say I, I clicked fire, and I'm doing a hit scan, something like that. And I'm shooting at what I see, which is this guy here. So I'm trying to shoot here. This guy on the server is actually here on tick 101. And when the server, so what happens is that I'm, I'm shooting here. So that's, that's when I, that's when I press the trigger here, bang. It's, it's on tick 103. And I shot at what I saw, which was this. So if I do a ray cast, either with, because I'm using physics, or if I'm using the, our leg compensated hitboxes, if I shoot, towards this guy. All the, the ray casts are going to be done for this tick against the data that I see, which is this. Actually, it could be the data that I have here at 100, but if you, if you place the interpolation targets 
that contain the hitboxes um, already on fixed update network here to be at the position of the interpolation stuff. I'll have the hitboxes very accurately here. And that's what I'm going to shoot against. So when I do this, my input is also sent to the server about TIC-103. The server is itself has not yet simulated TIC-103. So time will pass. My input reaches the server. The server is going to finally simulate 102. So he has the data about this guy there. And then he's going to have the data about 103. And this guy is going to be here. And he's going to receive the, the server is going to finally simulate my shot that, based on my input, happened on TIC-103. So when I shoot at 103, my raycast was targeting that direction, this guy that I saw at 103, because I was seeing him between these two ticks. But then the guy is actually here. So if I shoot against the, 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 the data that's already that's on the state on the server, it doesn't work. So that's why we have the lag like compensation buffers. So the lag compensation buffers, I'm going to make them yellow. So the lag compensation buffers keep all the positions of the past ticks up to the buffer size. By default, it's 60 ticks it keeps. So when I shot this, and I use the lag compensation API, and I said, it's me, player for client one, it will. Um, pass that to the lag compensation manager, which knows when I first simulated TIC-103 on my local prediction, it knows what, 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 what were the to and from, from to interpolation targets I was seeing and the alpha that I was seeing the character between here on my machine. So it knows exactly the timing I was seeing the character. And because the lag compensation buffer also has the data about between 98 and 99, what it does is when my shot is processed on the server, the server is going to process a raycast against the data between these two ticks. So here's how it happens. If my, my, if my snapshot, my interpolation alpha, if my interpolation alpha, was larger than 0 0.5 when my shot was first processed. Notice the interpolation alpha, not the state alpha. The interpolation alpha is the one about snapshots. So if my interpolation alpha was above 0 0.5, it means that I was closer to this tick than to this tick. If it was below or equals, it would be closer to this one. So here is the, here's what sub-tick accuracy means finally. So if you, if you say, if you don't use tick, sub tick accuracy, basically it will, it will recast against exactly one of these two. If it's a larger than 0 0.5, it's going to recast against this, which is closer to what I was seeing than this, right? So I have a much bigger chance of, of hitting. Remember, this is recording at 60 hertz or even higher if you were doing a competitive thing. But if you use sub tick, what I do is I actually process the recast against the data in between these two exactly with the alpha that I was seeing when I first that did that shot. So that's why we call it sub tick accuracy, because it is as accurate as your rendering is on the first time you process the click. Because if you're rendering faster than the ticks, it doesn't matter. We get that position to raycast against, and you can register your hits just like that. So that's, in a nutshell, how, how leg compensation works. So I hope this helps. Um, I'll do a shorter video just on network rigid bodies next, and um, then that would be about it for this series.